and welcome to Under SF Survival of the Artist. I'm your host, Sabrina Mora. And I'm Veroni kunz -Rafong. As we've seen throughout the previous episodes, the rising cost of living in San Francisco affects artists of every culture and background in various ways. This week, we will be exploring how artists use self-expression and social engagement to keep a positive well-being and support their communities in times of displacement and other hardships. For many struggling artists, galleries are the cornerstone of public art display. We visit a community-focused gallery in the Mission District to see what they are doing to keep the arts alive. Jorge Ana Hernandez, Executive Director of Acción Latina, sat down with us to talk about the challenges and rewards of directing an art gallery in an area of such high displacement. Let's see what she has to say. I'm the executive director of Acción Latina, and we are a nonprofit organization that has been around since 1970. And um, our mission is to promote cultural arts and community media and civic engagement as a way of building healthy, you know, and empowered Latino communities. So the newspaper was started in 1970 by a professor, um, Juan Gonzalez, the founder. He was a young guy back you know then um, teaching a Raza journalism class and as a project they decided to create the Tecolote and that really came out of um, a feeling that the mainstream press wasn't covering Latino issues and so Juan and his students decided to start a you know at, at that time it was a four-page tabloid newspaper which they named El Tecolote and it was an all-volunteer effort. It started out of San Francisco State, out of the Ethnic Studies Department. We've been producing cultural arts events for the last, you know, probably 40 years, but last year um, we were able to get some funds to um, showcase the work of local artists, local, especially Latino artists. We felt it was really important to open it up because as you probably know, there have been a lot of changes in the Mission District just because of gentrification and the displacement of artists and some of the cultural arts institutions. So for us it was important because we do own our building. You know, I think it is an enviable position to own our building. There are quite a few nonprofits that don't own their buildings and they are at risk of displacement. So we felt like we have a responsibility and an opportunity to really use our space to um, significantly expand what we do in the area of cultural arts programming. This particular exhibition that's up right now is by Anthony Holsworth and he's been, he has spent the last four years painting on site um, the Mission District and so he interacts a lot with people on the street while he's doing his work and he really has a great sense of how the community has changed over the years. Um, and then he, some of the paintings are on location in Pátzcuaro, um, in Michoacán, in Mexico. We want to make sure that we are able to continue to reflect the great work of Latino artists and non-Latino artists, but who are somehow depicting the, the nuances of Latino life. It's a difficult thing to see our neighbors as, I mean, I know right now there are at least four businesses that are have gotten eviction notices. So it's changing. I mean, you just never know, um, you know, who's gonna be hit next. We're hoping that this period will, the gentrification will slow considerably, if not end, and, uh, and that at some point, I mean, through various propositions that, that there'll be some stabilization around rents. And I mean, it's just outrageous. You know, this used to be very much of a working family's neighborhood, and that's not so much, you know, it's changed. It's happening, and especially for, for the, the, the culture there, too. Yeah, exactly. Mission is a great spot, and it's really cool that it actually started here in the Ethnic Studies Department. 
Anyways, the Art Gallery's current exhibit, De las Calles de México a las Calles de la Misión, is currently showcasing artist Anthony Holdsworth and his vibrant pieces. After the break, we will meet Anthony on the street and gain more on his perspective on the local art community. Stay tuned. Kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs. Totally. Did you know that boys that play with My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. Totally true. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you guys know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Before the break, Axion Latino told us about the challenges of sustaining an art gallery in the city. Next, we'll meet the current artist on exhibition at Axion Latina, Anthony Holdsworth. A traveling painter for 40 years and longtime resident of the Mission, Anthony has found a unique connection to the urban landscape. Let's head to the Mission to watch the artist at work in his community. My name is Anthony Holdsworth. I've been a painter of the urban scene in Oakland, San Francisco, and to a lesser degree in Italy and Mexico for um, going on 40 years. I started in Oakland and I, I, I lived in a house in Oakland and um, originally I went out and did country landscapes like a lot of plein air painters, you know, cows and hills and all that stuff. And then my truck broke down. And um, so I, I, I started painting around my house in North Oakland and I, I actually felt that the paintings I was doing were much more vital and were really more related to the reality that I was experiencing than this stuff in the countryside, you know, because I was living in an urban environment. Most of us live in urban environments. And I came to realize that the urban environment was a real uh, strong reflection of who we are. So I, I just started exploring it. Some of the energy in the paintings is actually the energy contributed by the community. And that, I think that's very important. And I think it, from the response I've been getting to my shows, I think, I think that transmits through the paintings. I've been concentrating the last four years on the Mission District. It pains me a lot to see the, the, um, the speculators destroying one of the more interesting, well, one of the most vital um, cultural communities in, in San Francisco. When I started working in the Mission uh, four years ago, my nephew, Camilo Landau was working at Acción Latina and he was, he was working on Carnaval and also music events. So I became familiar with Acción Latina and, and also um, uh, with Georgiana at the time. Uh, and when I had my first show, which was actually at the uh, Alley Cat Bookstore of the Mission District series, which was a really big success, I actually uh, gave 10% of sales to Acción Latina. Since I was painting the community, I felt I should be, you know, uh, I should be contributing something to the community, so returning something. And so we got to know each other real well, and they, about six months ago, they said, why don't you submit a proposal? And I submitted a proposal of a, a series of paintings, uh, uh, the mission and, and my paintings of Mexico to kind of draw the the link which I always have felt between 
between the mission and Latin America. I guess one of my favorite would be the, the very long one that I did of Bami Alley, which happened almost accidentally. I started out with a single panel like this and then decided to add another panel and then just kept adding panels till I had an eight foot wide painting. One of the things about that painting was it took about almost two months. And um, so, and it started on the left and went, worked to the right. So the, the lighting and the sky on the left is actually six weeks to two months different. <laughs> the sky, so there's an, there's an element of time in the painting as well, which maybe, maybe comes through, I don't know. I feel that the art scene in San Francisco is already in terrible trouble. I mean, it's in trouble um, from displacement, you know, a huge amount of displacement of artists out of, out of the city. Um, uh, they're being priced out by the, the, the rising cost of rents. They, they don't have the sales they used to have. Well, I've seen that very, very clearly, and it's really troubling. I, I've, it's become a lot more difficult to, you know, we, we don't, we felt the pinch ever since 2008. In fact, in 2008, it, uh, it was a real crisis for us uh, because for a couple of years, sales went almost to zero. Well, I mean, artists are one group of people who, I mean, it's part of their job is to report what they see, whether it's abstractly or realistically, you know. It, and uh, you, need, you need independent eyes, independent um, uh, you know, people who are connecting with reality from a, from a personal and independent point of view. And um, not always, but you often find um, the leading edge of progressive change, they're, they're, they're artists because they can see clearly what needs to be done. That was so amazing and we are actually really privileged because we have his artwork right here. And look at all the details, it's incredible. Look at the taqueria right there, taqueria farolito, amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love Victoria, the pan dulce, Woo it's bomb. When we return, we'll be joined in studio with the faculty of the Expressive Arts Therapy at CIIS, a university dedicated to providing higher education for individuals and communities committed to changing the world. We'll be right back. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Find fun activities to do, like boating and biking, or camping and hiking, plus much more. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. I mean, you not love him.
Welcome back to Under SF. I'm sitting with Shoshana Simons, the Department Chair of Expressive Art Therapy at the California Institute of Integral Studies. How are you? I'm very well, Sabrina. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So let's get started. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the mission of CIIS? Yes, CIIS is a quite, quite one of a kind sort of institution. Mm -hmm. And its mission is to bring together mind, body, and spirit. Um, usually in education, we go into education, it's about learning a lot of information and facts. Um, in, at CIS, it's about um, putting together um, ourselves as whole people. Mm -hmm. um, our mission in life, our sense of connection to our social world, um, our spiritual um, mission as well as our political mission, um, our personal growth and education. So it's so really kind of about a wholesome yes. education and just mind, body, spirit. Yes. So that's expressive arts therapy, correct? Yes. Yeah. So and yes, that's right. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, expressive arts therapy is a an example of um, inter the integration of different disciplines. So in expressive arts therapy, we integrate all of the arts into healing and growth work um, with individuals, couples, families, and communities. Got it. Um, so we're using visual arts, music, movement, dance, poetry, textile, spoken word, performance, mm -hmm. all of the arts. All of them, that's amazing. Yeah. And for the students there, what is expected for them or how do you help them succeed afterwards ex exactly once they exit CIIS? Mm -hmm. Well, in their third year at school, they are in a practicum, what we call a practicum. Um, for most of them, that's in the, currently in the Bay Area. Uh, CIS has hundreds of different sites throughout um, the Bay Area where students can practice for a year and serve the community. After they graduate, they go on to either stay, remain in those sites and continue working there, mm. um, or they can uh, they leave the community and go back to their home communities and spread knowledge there <laughs> and spread knowledge there that's incredible yes. and why do you think that expressive arts therapy is so important expressive arts therapy allows folks to grow and change and explore themselves and their relationships and troubles and challenges that they're having without necessarily having to talk about it mm -hmm. um, for folks that are experiencing extreme trauma um, for folks that, for whom language isn't the primary form of it, the verbal language isn't really the primary form that they feel at ease in, to be able to express through visual arts or through crea creating a song or even sharing a song that's meaningful to them is a way to, um, to express their creativity and find new avenues and new solutions right. to problems. And how this is, this is a little sad, but how has yeah. the rising cost of living in San Francisco affected the school? It, it, that's a really great question. It's really profoundly affecting the school. Um, our mission is very much to be able to recruit students that are reflective of the communities that they serve. So it's hit us hard. Um, but in our program, we are a very creative program. That's the basis of our being. And we're, we've responded to it by launching a low residency program where students will be able to come from any part of the country, any part of the world. Wow. They'll come for a, a week every semester and go home and take back with them what they're learning and be able to apply it in their home community and immediately impact to make a difference in people's lives. That's so incredible. I'm really excited because some of your faculty and alum are actually here, right? They are. And yes, we're going to be doing a little bit acti uh, a little activity later. What are we going to be doing exactly? Well, they're going to give an example of, of how we can use the creative process and the arts to focus on difficult things that are going on right now. You know, mm -hmm. we, in our community, we just had a very big election that has left a lot of stress in people's lives. Definitely. So Definitely. they're going to give a little example of how you can lightly touch into working on something that's really quite charged and um, access your own inner wisdom in how to handle it. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being here with us. I'm so excited. After the break, we're going to do our little activity, so please stay tuned. Thank, thank you. you.
Every time I hear the alarm bell go off in school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all going to be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words. Danielle Jake and Emilio Huri Martinez, faculty and alum of CIIS. Thank you for joining us today. We're really Thank you for having us excited. Here. We're going to do a little activity now. Yes, what of are course. What are we going to be doing? So I'm going to start by asking us to stand up, okay. and we are going to do a movement sound base check-in. So okay. whatever you're feeling right now, however you're feeling right now, we are going to check in by using like a movement or a sound. So I'm going to start first, and we can say our names first. My name is Emilio, and I am feeling right now. <laughs> we can okay. mirror it back. Emilio. <laughs> so you all do that with us. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. okay. Emilio. Emilio. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> <That's unfortunate. laughs> My name is Danielle, and I'm feeling calm. Hmm, Danielle. 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 Calm. Ah. Calm. Calm. Okay. My, na my name is Sabrina, and I'm feeling nervous. <laughs> mm, Sabrina. Sabrina, nervous. nervous. <laughs> All right. My name is Verani, and I'm feeling tense. Ver Verani, tense. Tense. Yep. All right. Okay. And I'm going to pass it on to you. Sure. So if you would go on ahead and have a seat. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is just to take you through a quick um, guided visualization. We have had some really interesting um, times over the last week, post-election. A lot of feelings are up for a lot of folks. And so this can be an opportunity for you just to review some of the the feelings and sensations that you have experienced in the last week or so, and then just be able to really tap into some of your inner wisdom or maybe wisdom that you have uh, run into over the past week that has been helpful to you, that has helped you navigate and maybe even think forward about how you want to move forward um, over the next weeks and years, okay? So I'm going to invite you so I'm going to invite you to uh, close your eyes sure. or come into a soft gaze and just, you know, get into a relaxed position just so that you can be able to um, access some of your memories over the last week. So just begin by noticing your breath. You don't have to change it at all, but just notice your breath. And then as you are noticing your breath, just reviewing back to last Wednesday when you first heard about the election results and maybe recalling some of the feelings or sensations that came up for you as you received those election results. And then um, even recalling some of the conversations that you had. Where were you? Were you with others? Were you with friends or family? Um, and what was the general sentiment and feeling that you were experiencing during that time? Then I wanna forward you a little bit to maybe Friday or Saturday when your day was maybe a little bit less hectic, maybe didn't have to go to work or school, but we're still processing the results. What situations conversations did you come across? Who did you have dinner with over those next few days? And what was the conversation like? How did you come together in community? Maybe share support, share wisdom. Maybe you were on your phone and lots of things coming through Facebook and Instagram. Maybe coming across a meme that was helpful or funny, or maybe provided some wisdom or guidance. 
just remembering a conversation that has stood out to you in the last week that impacted you in some way, maybe expanded your view or gave you some hope, reminded you of a of resilience that you have in your life. And now that you have these images and sensations and words and conversations that you've called up, you can open your eyes. And I'm going to invite you to take a few of the markers that are here and you can draw words, you can draw uh, images, using the colors appropriately for whatever feels right for you. You can just take that and be able to put that onto the page. Okay. Sure. So maybe they're phrases, pieces of wisdom that came out. Imagery, symbols. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And there's no right or wrong answer, just what's coming up for you in the moment. And what's nice is that these are the things that you can really hold on to, the things that you can remember, the pieces of wisdom that might be able to bring you through. Mm -hmm. Help ground and center you when maybe you're feeling a little confused or overwhelmed, that, you, that these are words and images and symbols that you can always come back to when you start to feel dysregulated or mm -hmm. just out of sorts. So you might want to just take the next couple of strokes or words <laughs> um, on the page and get to a good stopping place for yourself. Okay. And then we can just check in really quick. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe we'll start with you, Veroni. Yeah. So I drew a dock. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a nice water in the background, from like a lake. Mm. Um, I saw this weekend a, a post, my friend took a picture, she's living in Montana, and it's just uh, very serene. So yeah. serenity and peace. Serenity mm. and peace mm. is what you're holding on Beautiful. to. Beautiful. Well, um, I'll share mine, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you to Shoshana, thank you to Danielle, Emilio, and all of you at CIAS. We also want to give a special thanks to Jorgiana Hernandez and Anthony Holdsworth. See you next time for another episode of Undressed Up, Survival of the Artist. Thank you.